Welcome back to Election 360. All right, so we are going straight to the camp of the new patriotic party, flag bearer, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is in the Greater Accra region. He truncated his OT regional campaign tour and is back in the Greater Accra region. Let's find out from Daniel Opoku what the itinerary looks like for the NPP flag bearer. Daniel, uh, thank you for joining us on Election 360. Where exactly is the NPP flag bearer and what does the day look like in terms of the campaign, um, uh, the campaign itinerary? Right. right. So good afternoon to you, Martin. I'm currently the vice president of the NPP flag bearer is within the markets of Accra. This morning he began his tour at the Tuesday market, which is located around Manprobi within the Kolegono area, where he exchanged pleasantries with the market and also traders as well. And basically what he's trying to tell them is that for there is a need for them to vote for him. When he went to the Tuesday market this morning, they will be, they will still believe that he has to win the elections, also come back to help revive the the market, help them to rebuild or uh, renovate the market. Right from TV market, he moved to the Rollins, the Rollins Park area, where he also is the same thing, the same pleasant places with market to men. So basically asking them to vote for him, going to win this year's election. That's the decision of the vice president or the flag bearer of the entry, Dr. Marva, asking the market to vote for him. And the reception has been very huge and encouraging. There are those who, who, who really jumped back into him, and others are praising him. They are waiting for him to win this year's election. So become the president, because they believe that when he becomes the president, their lives will improve and also be able to champion most of his social intervention policies. Right. Maybe the last bit will also be, so what is the exact message? Because we know that the candidates have either region-specific messages they craft for the regions. It's in greater crowd. But these areas that he has started visiting or has already been to, what exactly is he telling them beyond just vote for me, let me be president? I'm sure he's, 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 he's been a bit more specific. Daniel. When you, when you listen to the vice president, or the NPP flag, but consistently he's talking about, when you look at his statement, the statement is structured in three parts. The first part has to look at the vice president being as a vice president, and also the policy that he supported the current president, and Edward Dan Kwaku to champion, for instance, the free teachers policy, the drone program, the digitalization programs. And secondly, the second part of the statement looks at what will be putting across when he becomes the president. The crux of the issue has to do with agriculture, where the various areas or the constituents that he visited, he talked about the need to set up a mechanized center where farmers should be supported, fertilizers, and also farm implements. And a women empowerment system will also be set up where soft loans will also be provided for market women and traders. Then uh, other digitalization processes are yet to be rolled out. This can consistently all the over 200 constituencies that the vice president has been to. That has been his message. And the message has been sinking down to the people. Maintaining the free SSS program go from 2017 till now, less of 5 million students have benefited. When it comes to TV, less of 6 billion Ghana students have been, been used to, to spend it for, spend it to scale the growth of the right. TV based based All right. Daniel, thank you for that uh, report. He's on the campaign trail of the NPP's flag bearer, Dr. Mahmoud Bamia. In a bit, we'll cross over to speak to Komla Kluche, who is on the trail of the NDC's flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama. Let's, let's put the greater crime in perspective for you in terms of numbers and try and uh, help you understand why both parties are pretty keen on winning the greater Accra region. And like we indicated, there is a good reason why both parties have crisscrossed this region. The MPP flag bearer is here. Right from time immemorial, everybody... Uh, who's followed elections in the greater Accra region will understand that it is a massive swing region. It has voted twice for the NPP, twice for the NDC, and the only outlier was in the 2020 elections when the NDC, although they won the region, did not win the government of the day. So if you look at the numbers uh, from 92, maybe we should just shift forward to from 2012. From 2012, the NDC got... 52.3% and won the elections. In 2016, that's when Anadu came and became president, he won the Greater Accra region by 52.4, which is just a percentage point higher than what John Mahama got. And if you look at the numbers in terms of uh, what they got in the, in the Greater Accra region, 2012, NPP had 46.9. NPP, uh, and when NDC uh, won, they lost 
2016 elections, they got 46.7. So it tells you that there was a further decline in the defeat the NDC suffered in 2016. In 2020, the NDC won all right. They had 51.0%. Uh, the NPP got 48.1%. However, the NDC did not form the government of the day. So that's one of the interesting outliers. Probably we can go into the dynamics in subsequent shows. But that's what the Great Accra is looking like.